Hi everyone, it's Callie from Paint Wing. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to combine loose watercolors of realism in order to create a rabbit. I will have the full material list in my description. Alright, so we're going to jump right into painting this rabbit. For this piece, we're going to be starting off by creating a wash. I'm going to first apply some water directly to my paper. And then after applying some water to the head and neck of the rabbit, I'm going to start by adding my colors. For this first part of the painting, we're going to be adding burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and raw umber. I'm just going to add these colors directly out of the tube and onto the paper. We're just going to randomly lay the colors down and let the colors mix on the paper. Things are going to look a little funky at first, but just trust the process. Try not to overthink things, and don't worry if it doesn't look just like mine. This is sort of the fun and experimental part of the process. Later we'll slow down and work on the details. I'm just going to keep dabbing in some color, and I'll mix in some water as well to help blend things. You can use a smaller paintbrush to help stay within the lines if you need to. For the ears, add some raw umber to the side and then some paints gray to the top of the ear because the tips of the rabbit's ears are a little darker because the tips of the rabbit's ears are a little darker. Sorry it's a little out of focus here. I have a hard time paying attention to my camera while I paint. While things are still wet, I'm going to splash some paint over here. You also might accidentally drip paint on your piece, like I do all the time. Next, let's add some pink or rose-colored paint to the middle of the rabbit's ears. I used Rose de Ray by Windsor Newton, but use whatever you have on hand. So at this stage, things still look a little weird. Don't worry, we'll be building up the layers to get definition. While things are still wet, I'm adding more raw umber paint. and a little bit of burnt sienna along the nose here. Let's add some more raw umber to the ear. and then a little gray to the top of the ear. Below the chin and along the back of the neck, we'll add some pigment where the shadows will be. I use burnt sienna under the chin and raw umber along the back. And then let's add some raw umber to the face and ear as well. Your initial wash should still be wet. I love mixing these loose elements of details. Some details you can add are tiny hair marks. I'm adding tiny little hairs by pulling out the wet paint. If your wash has already dried, you can simply add some more water and pigment before doing this. It helps use a small fine tip brush for this process. I am using a 3 over 0 round brush by Princeton. Thank you. 
Along the ear, add some gray or brown paint to create a hard line that contrasts against the soft wash. You'll notice I left some white space around the eye of the rabbit. We'll be filling that in later. Next, if you have a blow dryer, stir blow drying your wash until it's just slightly damp. If you do not have a blow dryer, simply wait for things to dry a little. To create some added texture to the painting, I'm going to splash some clean water onto the wash. You can see the blooms forming here. The reason I like adding texture is it helps add interest to your painting without painting every single hair of the animal. It's also just fun to see the variation in pigment. Remember that your painting might look very different from mine right now, and that is okay. With this process of painting, things are hard to control, and that's what makes it beautiful. Next, we'll need to allow things to fully dry. After things are dried, we can add some more definition and details because this rabbit looks a little blobby. <laughs> the first area we can work on is defining the head. So the head and neck don't look like one. Let's add some raw umber under the chin in order to do that. Another thing that we can do in order to make this rabbit look more like a rabbit is to paint in the eye. I'm going to start off by using my smallest brush, a 3 over 0 brown brush with burnt sienna paint. Let's add this paint to the eye. For these details, I'm using a lot less water, and I'm using a wet on dry technique. This will allow for things to be much easier to control. After applying the burnt sienna paint, dip your brush into some Payne's Gray and outline the eye, as I'm doing in the video. If you keep your paint very saturated for this part, it should appear almost black. Next, we need to fill in the pupil. For the pupil, we'll be leaving a small white highlight. Then let's paint around the diameter of the pupil.
After creating an outline, simply dip your brush into water and blend things out. After the eye looks good, let's move on to the mouth and nose of the rabbit. We'll be using a similar technique, first painting out a line and then filling it in. Next, let's add some tiny hairs using a brown paint. And let's also add some definition up here to the eye. The goal of this painting is to blend both loose and detailed watercolor techniques. The more detailed parts will require more wet on dry techniques, as well as a smaller paintbrush. I'm using raw umber for my brown paint, but you can use burnt umber as well. Here I'm defining the edge of the ear. And let's add some paint gray to the ear of the rabbit. We'll get back to some of those details in a little bit, but I think we really need to build up the color. In order to build up the color and make things pop more, I'm going to add a thin layer of raw umber all over the rabbit. I'm using a nice fluffy round brush for this process. Remember, while painting with watercolors, it's best to start out light and build up your colors. This is an additive medium. It also means if things get too dark or too saturated, it can be hard to go back. But don't worry, everything's a learning experience and you'll keep getting better. Let's just add a light layer of paint all over the rabbit. Try not to paint the high spots though. For example, the cheeks of the rabbit and around the eyes. The high points are usually where bones stick out more. Not sure if that makes sense. And I'll be adding more layers of paint under the chin, along the back, and across the bridge of the nose.
Using my blow dryer, I'm drying the first layer. You don't have to use a blow dryer. I just like to speed things up. But if you like to take it easy, no worries. Feel free to pause the video or rewind things if you need to. All right, now things are looking a little better, but we still need some more details. Let's paint some tiny hair marks on the face and around the eyes. Let's paint some tiny whiskers over here. And some hairs around the mouth. We aren't going to paint every hair in, but just some. All right, now we're back to adding more layers. Yay! You probably noticed I go back and forth between adding layers of color and fine details. For these next layers, we'll not be covering the entire rabbit. Just specific areas that need to be enhanced. Like under the chin, let's add some burnt sienna. And around the eye. All right, let's let that area dry. And then again, more details. The next details we need to add are these little whisker marks on the cheeks. I'm using a Thrower Zero Round brush and raw umber. Maybe some hairs over here. Again, some more paint under the chin. Let's not go quite as far out as the previous layer. Then some more paint on the back of the neck here. In my paintings, I like my layers to show through, so I don't blend them in very much or at all. I like seeing the painting process, if that makes sense. Some hair marks on the bridge of the nose between the eyes. And some more layers coming up between the chin and some on the ears as well. I'm using my raw umber and number 8 round brush for this part. Next I'm adding some Payne's Cray to the top of the ear. Let's just softly blend things out with a prompt brush. Now we need to finish the details. 
I'm going to paint some whiskers using my smallest brush and paint into gray paint. You can also use a fine point pen if you find it difficult to paint the thin lines. All right, and this piece is completed. Thank you so much for watching. The drawing template and reference image will be on Patreon. Let me know if you have any questions below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day and have fun painting.